Right, now we've got a basic screen to start doing stuff with. We're going to create a um, kind of a sound button, something we can click on to play a sound. Now to do this, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call this sound button. Now, uh, I'm doing this just to keep things um, a bit clearer, a bit uh, simpler. So I'm going to call it sound button example. Now, in order to make these two work together, I need to basically make my main code, which is this bit here, uh, uh, use it. So I'm going to go from sound button example import star. Okay. And what that'll do is it'll load up any code that I write in here and put it into here. Okay. And that's a very simplistic way of, of putting it, but hopefully um, uh, that will help for that. So, what am I going to do here? Now, we're going to be using maybe um, something that you uh, might not be familiar with, which is known as object-oriented programming. And the reason for that is because I find for um, for Pygame, object-oriented programming works incredibly, incredibly well. So I'm going to, first of all, get my uh, Pygame library loaded so I can use it. And then I'm going to create my sound button class. So a class is kind of a collection of related items, okay? So you can think of a sound button as a button on the screen, which I can click on, it'll play some sounds, okay? Nice and simple, but I want more than one of them, okay? Because I don't want to have to code each one individually, I'm going to kind of create the code which will kind of um, be used for all of them, and then I'm just going to change the sound they play. So that's the idea. Now, in order to create my sound button, well, I need to know a few bits of information. So I'm going to use something called the constructor. Now the constructor is the code that gets run when I make my button. Okay, so when I make my button, I need to know what sound am I going to load up. So I'm going to have the file name. I also want to know well, what color do I want this this um, button speed? Do I want red, green, blue, whatever. Okay, what color? I then want to know. Uh, whether it's going to be, well, sorry, uh, where it's going to be on the screen. It's X and Y coordinates. So because we are drawing to the screen, we need to know which location to, on the screen we're going to uh, draw it. And also, I want to know whether this sound should loop or not. Now, obviously, I could put default values in there. There's lots of cool stuff I could do with Python with that one. We're not going to do any of that. Uh, we're going to keep this as simple as I can possibly make it. So. We're then going to um, put in the following code, okay? So what have I got here? First of all, I want to save the color. Now, in object programming in Python, okay, if I want my object that I create to remember a specific value, we call that an attribute, okay? So I want... Um, my button to have an attribute called color because it will have a color. So this color here is going to be assigned to the object's color. The next line, I've got self.sounds, I've got another attribute called sounds, and this one is going to load the sound file up. So this file name is the name of the file I want to load up. Okay. And I then use the mixer library from Pygame. And the dot sound will allow me to create a sound um, sound object, and I simply just pass through the name of the file that I want to load up and turn into a sound. I'm then going to have a rectangle, and we're going to use this rectangle to um, act almost like a collision box. Okay, so when I click on the rectangle, it's going to tell me if it's been clicked on or not. So this is kind of a, a pie game um, a bit of code that I can use to help me, so I'd have to code it myself. Um, so I create a rectangle, notice the capital R, at a specific um, uh, coordinates, and that's going to be the size of my button. Now I could pass that to those numbers through as well, or I can make them bigger or smaller, it's be up to you to do that. Then I've got a variable, and this is just going to be true or false, uh, whether the, um, the, loop, the the sound should loop or not. So if it loops, that's going to be true. So that means it will just keep playing. When it gets to the end, it will just loop again. Um, if it's um, not true, then if it's false, then it, it won't, obviously. 
And then initially the sound's not going to be playing, so I've got this variable to control whether it's playing or not. Because what I want to be able to do is click on the button, it starts playing, when I click the button again, it stops it. Okay, so I need something to tell me whether it's playing or not. So that's the first thing we're going to need. The second thing which I'm going to need is something to allow me to draw the button. Okay, so we're not going to get it working yet, we are going to draw it. So in order to draw it, I need a command called draw.rect. So in Pygame, draw is a, a, a set of commands which allow us to draw to the screen, so squares, circles, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, rect is a rectangle, okay, they just call them rects. So how does this work? Well, first of all, I'm going to be drawing to the screen. So you can see here I'm passing through the screen. And then using a specific color, okay, that's the color that I set up here. And the rect basically says, well, where on the screen is it going to go, which I set up here, okay? So that's now enough code to get this working. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to create my first button. So I'm just going to copy this. So what's it look like? Well, I'm creating a sound button. So notice that is exactly the same as this here. Okay, so that allows me to get access to this class and create the object of this class. And I need to pass through the file name, which matches this here. Then I'm passing through what color I want it to be. In this case, that's a red color, which matches this. I then got some coordinates I'm gonna use. So here, 20 by 20, so that's gonna be kind of the top left-hand corner, roughly. And then I want it to loop, because this is gonna be a drum loop. So I want it to loop. So that's why I've got the true there. So that loads up the, uh, that kind of creates the button, but it won't display until I tear this display. So underneath where I fill the screen, I will go drum one dot draw button and I pass through the screen. Okay. Now this must go in between the fill and display dot flip. Okay. If you put it anywhere else, then it, it just won't work. So if I run that, fingers crossed, I should get a lovely clashing red button, my beautiful, sexy yellow background. Um, doesn't do anything yet, but that's fine. Okay, I've now got the um, the button ready. I can now, if I wanted to, add some more. So in true blue Peter style, here's some I created, uh, created earlier. So I can run those. And now I've got only one of them. Okay, now you probably think, well, why you just added more code? I did add more code, but remember I said until you actually add them here as well and tell them to draw themselves, nothing's going to happen. So now you can see why. Okay, so here I go. Here's all my lovely buttons. I'm not doing anything yet, but they are ready to work basically. So that's the second lesson.